All right, should you sell all your stocks in May? This is an article I got. I've never heard this before, but I got this from the boys at Fidelity. Um, Fidelity, uh, what do you call it? Fidelity Trading, Fidelity Brokerage uh, House, whatever, whatever you want to be. It's like Vanguard and it's like BlackRock. It's like all the others. Uh, but most of these places, I want to let you know, they are more of consultants. They are not certified financial planners, certified retirement planners. They are really just consultants that work at Fidelity. And their goal, if you do have accounts with any of these places, even uh, the worst one is Ameriprise. Stay away from Ameriprise and their wealth advisors at all costs. They are set up to use your money to make them money while you stay at basically no gains and maybe a little loss. How do they do that? When you look at the small print, you kind of trust these guys. Oh, yeah, we referred my buddy. He made money with him. Don't buy that. Do your own research. Again, doubt, but verify. Don't let, because Timmy, your best friend, said, oh, go use this guy, Timmy. Timmy's brother, Joe, who works at Ameriprise, uh, he's going to set you up with your wealth and advise you and blah, blah, bullshit. They'll run these stupid Monte Carlo's bull crap. Uh, you pay him a couple thousand bucks a year. Plus, what they get you on is they sell you this BS insurance crap, and they also get you on fees and expenses. They'll say, hey, we can sell you this VUL life insurance thing each year for a crazy amount of money. Oh, you can just pay for it out of this uh, brokerage um, a margin account. Oh, they don't tell you the small print. They want they figure it's up to you to read that. The Ten percent interest at the time is probably like twenty percent now. What a freaking scam! Anyway, point, end point, final point. Stay away from Ameriprise. These other companies, they are not certified CFP, CRFPs. Not that that's any good either. These people are all really just to sell you crap to make money off your money. They, I don't know how to get that through to people. Um, you have money in your pocket. Their goal is to take that money and put it in their pocket through expenses and fees and selling you crap you do not need. Um, if it wasn't for the economy about to collapse, I would say the best thing that anyone can do is dollar cost average in an index 500 fund S&P over time. But right now, with the way they're nosediving this economy in our country on purpose or by design or just pure idiocy, uh, I don't have, I don't know what to do. Money market 5% may be the way to go. So that's where I come to this article. Should you sell in May? Uh, again, point being that I was making is these advisors that they're not advisors. They're just consultants at these companies. Do not believe them. They'll try to sell you this BS and annuities, which are nightmares. Stay away from annuities at all costs. Uh, you don't just don't, don't, don't. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it is keep it simple. Um, do your own research. I know it's a freaking people are sick of hearing that, but go to investopedia.com, read lots of articles, but stay away from Seeking Alpha, Morningstar, CNBC, Squawk Box, and that crazy clown, Jim Cramer. Those guys are all idiots. They write these articles trying to basically propagandize you to do stuff so you're left holding the bag like buy um, or what they were doing recently is sell, sell Tesla. It's that's a 40, 50% year low. Sell, dump it, dump it, dump it. And then what happens? The thing jumps back up. Uh, they were hoping you would dump all your shares so they could scoop them up at a low price. Uh, that was one instance. Other times is they run up a price. Oh my God, get in FOMO, FOMO, FOMO. You buy in at all times high. Right wise, you're buying that day. They dump, they dump and leave you holding the bag and then the, uh, the uh, price crashes. And then you won't be able to get your money back ever if, if maybe 10 years, if at all. It's just, yeah, you got to watch these folks. Go with your gut. Buy when there's blood in the streets. If it's red, I like to buy when things are red. It's tough. It's very tough. Oops, excuse me, man. Woo. But you want to buy, you know, it's all oh, I want. It's going green. I want to buy now. But once you buy green, say it shot up a buck, you buy it at that time. Guess what? It's going to correct back down in an hour to maybe up 10 cents. And you're like, damn it. So what I usually find works for me if I see it down a couple percentage, 5%. 
Maybe I'll buy dollar cost average in. Uh, and then you'll be surprised. You're buying in the red. It's very psychologically difficult to do that because uh, you're thinking, oh, my God, it could keep going down, especially with this freaking Bitcoin crap. It's down a thousand. I think we're down. To, let's go look. I hate looking at this thing. I'm learning not to look at it anymore because I think the hype has worn off from the ETF crap days. And then the um, having bull crap is done. So we're down. Yeah, I mean, God darn it. We are down to 62.9. Yeah, little look at this. What, what is going on? I have no idea. You click on this crap. Nobody knows. It always happens on the damn weekends. Uh, <laughs> someone's manipulating something. They're dumping the whales or someone's doing something. Always on the freaking weekends and after normal business hours. It's always amazing to me how that works. Uh, but the good thing about Bitcoin is you can trade at all time. So you can actually set your stop losses if you're smart enough. I'm not. I'm just letting it ride. I should probably set a stop loss, but I have not. I should get off my butt and do that. Anyway, so what's this May thing? Uh, the way the economy is going is basically they say the most profitable times of your stocks are November to May. The rest of the year is crap. So basically, the idea here is um, dump everything in May and sit around till November. Because usually things go down or they don't do much at all. October is usually a bad month as well. But April is typically a bad month for stocks because of tax time. You know, government's taking all your money. They're robbing you blind and they're trying to destroy your business and your personal wealth. And people just don't want to invest at that time because they've got to cover it. Or the, uh, the uh, IRS police will come beat your door down and shoot your dog and take all your money. Yeah, uh, that's what it's coming to. That's what it's been. It's just disgusting the taxation in this country. Um, and then it doesn't go to help the country. Typically, taxation is to help your local economy, uh, local uh, infrastructure, local services, and uh, basically pay for, you know, some federal stuff as well. No, they're shipping all the money overseas to other countries to cover their pension plans. It's, it's gone out of control. Something's going to give, and it's going to not, it's going to be a hard landing. It's going to be the worst thing we've seen in probably 100 years. It's coming. So I, I knew that uh, May would be an up year because uh, Yellen and all these crazy people in the Fed, these are, what do they call them? Globalist crazy people. Uh, they're trying to keep the economy and the market high because of the, um, the Ma election, which we know how that's going to go. Wink, wink. It's, you know, it's already rigged. Come on. Uh, let's see. So I think it's going to go well in May. Uh, that's the idea. Then after May, getting in closer to June and I would start thinking about just dumping and getting into cash. I'm mostly in the cash now. There's some bucks I'm playing around with some of the stuff I mentioned before with crypto, the miners, the um, options, and what the hell is the other one? ETF and then actually Bitcoin. I want to see how the options thing goes. I've never done that before. It's high risk, very high risk, but I no guts, no glory and um, no risk, no reward, right? But you can always lose everything. So knowing me and my damn luck, I'll lose more than I make. That's the way it goes. I usually find I'm up, say, a 1,000, and guess what? Oh, my God, I'm down a 1,000 on another thing. You just never get that freaking win from my point of view. Sometimes you get those doubles. And if you miss the double, you get mad at yourself. Last week I had a double, and I did not sell. I should have because now things are back down. I'm basically at a bunt. But I'm going to hold and hopefully it goes back up. This one miner, the Wolf WFL, it was up big, bigly for me. And uh, I did not sell. I got distracted. Uh, had my hand in too many cookie jars. And that was stupid of me. Should have focused on one thing. Life lesson there. Focus on one thing. Try to get the double. A couple days of trading it. And get the hell out and make some profits. Uh, yeah, and keep snowballing your uh, money. The more cash you have, the more you, the more you have. <laughs> anyway. Uh, what is the sell and mango way theory? Uh, let's see. The best six months of the year reveals um, has been November through April, as we talked about. Hence the saying investors should sell in May and go away. And I didn't know that existed, but I just think it's May is get out because this thing is going to fall and implode, not just globally, but this country, it's going to get bad. Everyone's getting laid off. AI is actually replacing some of these stupid jobs that people held uh, that can are just can be done by AI, to be honest. And they, people should have seen that coming. Um, REIT's office, commercial office space is being given away for pennies. 
micro pennies on the dollar. Uh, if anything, they should turn those into homeless shelters, office spaces. Malls are gone. Amazon's laying off. Tesla, of course, is dumping a lot of jobs. People don't want the crappy EVs anymore. They're just dangerous, man. They're cute and all. They had a, they were cute for a little bit. Early adopters got in, you know, got their fix, got their high, and now people are realizing, oh my God, you can't insure these damn things. Uh, one accident, the thing's totaled because the cost of repair plus any dent to that battery pack with those millions of little lithium cell batteries, it think can become a thermal runaway and burn your house down or burn your neighborhood down. It's just like a little nuclear reaction goes off. If you ever seen one of those things burn, it is not pretty. It's an extra hot fire. Firefighters have to use like 10 times as much water. Tow operators are afraid to tow them because even though the fire may be out, they get them back to a tow yard and the damn cars reignite into a thermal runaway so that you'll see in dump, a dump yard, a tow yards, uh, they actually isolate the EVs 50 feet from any other vehicle in case they do re reignite. Uh, they don't take down the rest of the uh, I, uh, ice cards, internal combustion cards, which are the best cars out there. Um, yeah, that's that's just interesting. Anyway, I don't know what I was babbling about. Uh, <laughs> that's the beauty of these stupid videos. Uh, so anyway, things are just tanking, man. That's why I was talking about the economy. Layoffs, Tesla, I got on that rant. Uh, Boeing, Boeing has a problem because they're under that DEI, did not earn it, hiring, DEI in diversity, inclusion, equity, whatever that bull crap is, it's really did not earn it. They hire based on your identity, not your merit. And now planes are fucking, oh, sorry. <laughs> planes are freaking falling apart in flight because they're hiring non-quality people to do the work just because they feel their uh, ma, ma wokeness. And uh, it's just not good, man. It's, you can joke and not believe any of that crap, but it's, it's for real. Um, you're pushing all this crap and you're going to get sub-quality product out of it. Just hire based on skill and merit how freaking hard is that but right now we're going through that transition where people don't see it they're blinded by ideology stupidity uh or just people are so soft now skinny fat times we're in the skinny fat softness time we need some good hard times i'm almost all for everything collapsing because with the collapse things get tough people go holy crap it's tough i can't eat can't get a job then people get tougher and then things start going back, you know, tough times make hard men. And that's what we need. We need that freaking survival instinct again. Right now, everyone's just skinny, fat, pugsy little people. Oh, you hurt my feelings with a joke. <laughs> it's ridiculous. So the implosion's coming. Prepare accordingly. I think May, you got to just prepare. Watch it daily. And if you have stuff in a 401k, you might want to tell the freaking uh, custody holder, or whoever's managing your 401k, you might want to think about going to cash because once that puppy drops 10 percent by the time you get your order in to go to cash it might drop another 20 percent and you're down 30 percent and that's your freaking retirement money it could take a decade to get that back it drops faster than it goes up uh tesla's a great example of that it dropped like down 40 50 percent from all-time highs but it bounced back a little bit dead count bounce i still may think it go it may go to oblivion down to zero I don't know. I don't know what Musk has in store. A lot of people are, are being laid off. Executives are quitting. Either he's cleaning house, optimizing, pivoting. Uh, I have no idea. I just don't. He's just not a good front man. Uh, he's not the Iron Man, Tony Stark guy. We th the movies make him out to be. It's He stammers through the uh, um, earnings meetings and stuff like that it's almost at first it was cute always oh, bright he's a he's just too smart a brain works too fast for his mouth now it's just embarrassing get someone in there who can speak convey the messages uh don't build a truck driver truck that's going to fall apart when you release it the first day i don't know he needs to be behind the scenes working on ideas and uh get another front man out there like a jobs type personality steve jobs who can sell things and talk coherently you know what I mean? It's just getting embarrassing. And it's affecting the stock price. I mean, it's a 170 right now. It used to be two, 300. I don't know. It's ridiculous. Oh, no, no. I'm getting worried, too. I mean, I'm down 40%. What do I do? I don't know, man. I just do not know right now. Uh, so anyway, this May thing. It's funny that this exists November to May. I know April is always bad. I know October is usually bad. Summer is usually a drag. But I didn't know people usually would dump. And then they'd get back in. Uh, they'd be out from May through October because the S&P doesn't do much, about 2%. I think it's going to be a negative 50%. This thing's going to tank. 
worse than we've ever seen. Uh, I think they're inflating some of the numbers uh, just just to keep the economy up. They're just BSing the jobs numbers and all this crap. Because a lot of people lost their $200,000 a year jobs. Now they went and got two part-time jobs. So they count them as two jobs. So the numbers are skewed in their favor to push a narrative. So you got to watch that too. Doubt everything you hear right now because I think it's all lies. Just look around. Look how much everything costs. Freaking pickup trucks, 90000 plus. A thousand sitting on the car dealers. Boo hoo, boo hoo for the car dealers. Uh, they got greedy and the manufacturers got greedy. Nobody can afford a 95,000 piece of crap Chevy or Toyota Tundra or a piece of crap Ford Raptor. You know, come on. These things are just trucks. It should be like 40K at most, right? It's just a freaking truck. And really, why do you need a truck? Come on. I have a little pickup Tacoma. I really don't use it as a truck at all. I really should have got a Highlander, an SUV, or an, a, what do you call those damn thing? Minivans. Because I don't use it as a truck. It's, it's just, I don't know. I see people around this small town I'm in driving these trucks. Go, Where are you going to park that damn thing? <laughs> it's so big. And you're not really, really using it as a truck because you're afraid to scratch it. I don't know. It's all just image. It's all BS, man. Get out of that materialistic attitude. If you can break that mindset, that brainwashing, you might do well. Just buy what you need, not waste your money on crap you don't need. $90,000 pickup truck. Holy crap. And they are cutting them down. They are coming down big time, hugely in discounts and stuff like that. All right. Anyway, this is all this May crap. I didn't know about this. It makes good sense, but I, I'm doing it for another reason. So should you sell this May? I just think the economy is going to collapse, man. Uh, you need to protect yourself. Do your own research. Do some reading. What do you see going on out there? I see nothing, like I said, about massive layoffs, inflation, inflation, inflation. Um, damn local governments like California forcing minimum wage, which destroys uh, restaurants and businesses. You cannot do that. It's people that don't know anything about economics and business are in government forcing that on people. They're fools. I don't know. Either they're total idiots, idiocracy. Or they're doing it on design to destroy the uh, destroy their local state. I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> it's I don't. It's the stupid people in charge, and it just hurts the people that are trying to do something good. It's just not good right now. Uh, let's see. Inflation worries. What do you mean worries? It's here. I mean, God, it's bad. Um, good thing is, I see out of this if people that can work with their freaking hands, people that can sit down. The other day, I actually rotated uh, my little truck's tires, and I didn't have a, a pump jack. I had to use this stupid little bottle jack. It took forever, but I did it. I took all four tires, rotated them, and I was thinking to myself, <clears throat> I don't mind doing it. It's something to do. You get a little dirty, but whatever. I don't want to pay some guy 80 bucks to do it. That's just stupid. Why pay someone money to do something that you can do yourself? I know your time's valuable. Now, nah, bullshit. Save your money, do it yourself. Don't pull that, my time's valuable. No, it isn't. Just do it yourself. You're giving your, someone else money to do something you can do. Find the time to freaking do it. Um, yeah, and I was sitting there going, how many other people today can actually change their own oil? Not that you need to do it a lot, unless it's completely dark and syrupy and black inside. Uh, most oil will last 10,000 miles. I mean, the old change your oil every 3,000 miles was another propaganda thing to keep uh, car dealership services in, in, uh, in business, oil sales high, you know, uh, what else, service departments high. If it's not black, black, dark, thick, you're fine. Just reset the freaking computer on your car, hold the button in, say, reset, you're done. You know, uh, keep the fluids good, check the oil, make sure it's not completely black. Once it's black, change the damn stuff, of course. Rotate your tires when you start seeing wear on the front too, uh, and stuff will last. Uh, how many people can actually do that? How many people can even change their freaking air filter or put fluid in their wipers? It's basic little crap. How many people can even change their spark plugs and gap them accordingly? Uh, rotate tires, oils, plugs, air filters, in cabin filters, and the stupid thing like wiper blades and wiper fluid. Uh, wow. If you can do those things, you're my hero. But most people cannot. Uh, yeah. <laughs> There's even things you can buy now to plug into your computer to see what's actually going on with the truck. It's not that expensive. And then why go to a dealership to pay them to do it? AutoZone or one of those places will do it for free to read the codes for you. 
Um, but yeah, I think what's happening is people are not going to be able, they can't right now buy cars. They're ridiculously overpriced. Uh, you'll go broke real fast. You won't be able to feed your family. Uh, what What's going to happen is people are keeping their cars a lot longer. Our one truck is 12 years old. My truck is, uh, my God, I forget. Let's see. It's uh, four, eight. Oh my God, it's eight years old. Wow. So uh, we're definitely keeping them. So if you can work with your hands and do mechanical stuff, basic repairs, rotate tires for people to even do brakes, which is not that difficult. Just need to have the jacks, you know, safety jacks, right tools to take off tires, stuff like that, and know where to get the right parts. Uh, people that can do that and uh, actually maybe run a business, which is not easy these days with the government taxing the hell out of you. Because again, they don't know how to run a business or have never written a paycheck or payroll. So they're trying to tell you how to run your business or put regulations on it to make your life difficult. It's just not good. But if you can uh, work with your hands, do car maintenance, you're going to do really well. If you're a plumber, you're going to do super well. HVAC, repair, uh, electrician, I'm trying to think what else. Uh, handyman, it's a bad name label for people. Handyman in the fact that you can actually fix things and make them better, repair things, not just come in and pick up leaves in the backyard, but re replace a rotted post, uh, fix a, fix a freaking leaking toilet, for, uh, fix a leaky irrigation system. I had that, my stupid irrigation system, the guy put on the house, I bought a piece of crap. You buy this crap, it lasts four years and your freaking things leaking. I just turned everything off. I said, what a joke. What a waste of money. Early bird crap, early bird system crap. That's what it was. Uh, what else are yeah, handyman stuff that can repair lights? Uh, most of the stuff with the handyman jobs is a GFCI tripped. Most people don't know anything about that because they don't know things. People And you get in there, that's a quick 150 bucks for you to go and peek. You reset the GFCI, you know, twiddle your thumbs for five minutes, make a phone call, say, oh, fixed it, you know, and you're good to go. You're off. Uh, that type of stuff, replace a ceiling fan. Uh, replace, oh my God, simple things. People don't know on their houses what to do. They just don't know general maintenance, let alone the car thing. I gave you the basic stuff on what you need to do in your car. You have a house. Even if you're renting, <clears throat> your landlord probably doesn't even know this crap. If you own a house, you got your HVAC filters. You need to have those replaced each month at, uh, at least. Pushing it two months is it's going to clog up and put a lot of strain on the HVAC motor uh, and make it just wear out faster, right? And uh, it's going to decrease airflow and won't cold or heat the house as fast. So the filter is number one. You can buy those on Amazon, buy like 12 to last a year, right? Done. Boom. And just have a little step ladder nearby. You can pop it in, pop it out, throw the other one out, boom, you're good to go. Uh, I just went and bought a wash one, a metal grate. I don't know if it's working. I had it in there a month. And uh, I did rinse it out recently and some dirt came out. So it's catching something. So we'll see how that thing works. It was uh, 30, 40 bucks. We'll see if it goes. But uh, I thought it'd be a nice thing to try instead of buying all those filter ones. Number two, HVAC, you can actually clean the outside condenser unit too by buying this foam spray. You spray on and let it dry off. Then you can hose it off. It gets all the dirt from the fins out. Uh, you have to disconnect the power. Make sure you do that. Uh, it'll make the uh, noise go down on your HVAC and make the airflow better and make it run more efficient. Yeah, I, only if it's really dirty, keep the dirt, keep the plants and crap away and dirt away from your outside condenser unit and don't run the mower by it. My God, don't run blow grass and dirt into your things. The things are 7,000 bucks. Take care of it. Uh, other things people do not know how to do, which makes your equipment run better, is your dryer vent. Uh, that dryer vent you want to get in there uh, I wouldn't use a leaf blower in there because you're just going to force things into more clumps and make it harder to get out. The best thing to do is um, disconnect. Go from the outside and get one of those wire brushes. If you have a spinny wire brush, the four inch diameter thing, that works great like a worm. But I, I got in there with a um, just like a long brush and curled and just pulled all the crap out. It's a messy, messy job. And then I got the vacuum in there and sucked all the clumps of crap out. There's a lot of stuff that builds up. And after I did that, uh, 
the clothes dried a lot faster. Before the clothes wouldn't dry, they a little, you know, the cycle would finish. They'd be still quite a little damp. I went, something's not right here. Went and cleaned out the vents in the dryer themselves. Went behind the dryer, disconnected, and installed the clumps. Got all the clumps out, all the way to the external, the egress of the house, and made sure the flaps would close so the bugs don't move in there when the things aren't running. And then when you run it, you see the vents, the flaps flip up, and the air pressure is good, and you know it's working. Little crap like that. It's amazing. Uh, make your house last and cut down on anything breaking. Um, I'm trying to think what else really works around the house. Um, that's that's the main stuff. It's just uh, just the venting and just the equipment and cleaning stuff. People don't know how to do that. And uh, I think now when the economy is going to collapse, if you can do that, you're going to do well for not only your house and saving money, but if, uh, if someone nearby needs that help or they have a problem, uh, you can say, hey, I can help you, but you know, don't be as shy. How much is your time worth? I'll do it for a hundred bucks, man. I'll come over there and clean that vent out for a hundred bucks. You know what I mean? <laughs> don't be shy. Your time is valuable. You never get time back. And you go help someone and they don't, they're not going to give you anything. Most people are going to try to take advantage of you. They may be good people when blah, 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 bull crap. If they're taking advantage of you and not offering you something in return, they're not good people. Uh, they should offer you a dinner or something for helping them out. It's just common courtesy. Out of respect for you doting your time. Um, other than that, I saw that, like I said, let's get back to this. I think the May thing triggered a lot of this conversation we just went through. Is uh, It's going to be bad. Uh, I don't know how they're going to kick the can down the road to the stupid election. Uh, they're going to try, but I think May may be the time to keep an eyeball on it if you have stocks. Uh, even if you're down a little bit, I'm thinking if I'm even down... And I'm getting near the end of May. I don't know. I'm going to say just hit the loss and get the hell out and get back into cash. Get my 5% of my money market. And thank you, Jesus, that I didn't lose any more. Because uh, once you lose it, man, it's... I think with this year in 2025, it's going to be a decade to get that money back. And it's just not good. If you need it to live, yeah, good luck. You're going to have to go get a couple part-time jobs and really be hating life. Because when you're working part-time jobs, you're treated like a freaking minion. You're not a person. Uh, they treat you just as show up, you're on the schedule, work, shut up, and go home. And you get paid pennies, and you'll be thankful to get those pennies. Uh, let's see, what else? I know, doom and gloom, doom and gloom, but I don't know, man. I'm reading the tea leaves. I'm looking at the writing on the wall. Uh, I think people have maxed out their credit cards now. They kick the can down the road. Some people may have got a tax return. They're going to burn through that real quick on their uh, bonbons. and shiny objects maybe they're going to go buy a ninety thousand dollar pickup truck real stupid move there and uh, or go on vacation and waste it at a hotel that's overpriced and uh yeah De eating out at dinner all the time getting unhealthy eating all that salt you know when you eat out most of the time the food is really all if you look in the mornings at a town <clears throat> especially a tourist town what you notice in the morning from say 6 a.m till say 10 there's you know tourists people are still sleeping but the trucks roll in and usually it's one or two big food processing companies, Cisco. And then there's one other one, I forget. And then your grocery store company. So really all the restaurants, you see these food trucks go by. It's the same truck dropping at every restaurant. Cisco's it's all the Cisco food they're delivering. And some of the crap is frozen. So they're serving you and heating up uh, frozen food and serving you with all that sodium and processed chemicals in it. It's not healthy. Unless you know a restaurant has a real chef and they're cooking fresh fish, fresh food, fresh pasta, odds are it's frozen, shipped in on a truck from Cisco that you're paying top dollar where you could just go home, go to, go to your Publix or whatever, grocery store, buy a pound of hamburger, buy some rice and beans, make some, uh, get some taco mix. Boom, you have a nice taco thing going there for a while. Get some tortilla shells. That stuff will last you a few days, and it's going to cost you under freak. I'm going to say under 20 bucks. You know what I mean? Versus spending, going out to dinner with drinks for two people, 100, 100 bucks minimum with tip. You know? So it's, it's uh, just there's ways to save money, and people are going to have to start realizing uh, they have to cook at home. And that's one good thing about they're saying with the forced authoritarian communist minimum income low what do you call it minimum wage of 20 bucks on fast food in california 
it's going to cause people to not eat out there anymore because it's too expensive. So people are going to eat hopefully healthier. There's some idiots that eat there every day, like at McDonald's. Whoa, I'm amazed they're still alive. It's almost worse than eating, a pack of, eating or smoking a pack of cigarettes a day. Man, I don't know. But uh, maybe it'll force people to eat home. I doubt it. Because once you're, once you're lazy and fat, you're going to keep finding another way to eat crappy food throughout your life. Um, I don't know. Anyway, what else we got going on here? Let's look at some of these stupid trade prices we got going on here. Uh, I kind of took a turd pill on, a, on oil energy. It kind of, they had, Exxon had bad earnings reports. So that was a surprise to me. I called that one wrong. Exxon went down three bucks a share. And also with his XLE, which is an ETF which has X, uh, Exxon in its holdings, went down just a little bit. So I like the ETFs. This is a good example. ETFs have a better hedge sometimes because they have many holdings, whereas if I just, like I have Exxon, boom, I took that hit right in the gut, right? But with the um, ETF, I didn't take it as bad. So it's an interesting thing with the ETFs. It's almost a better hedge you know what I mean? Against ups and down, down correction. You know, I don't know. That's the way I'm seeing it. I could be completely wrong. Uh, so that's just my take on that. So let's hope these things bounce back. A wolf is the, um, oh my God, crypto miner, Bitcoin miner. Let's hope they go back up. This is the one I did not sell on time. It was up here and I was asleep at the wheel and I screwed up. I took my eye off the prize. That was a nice double and I let the double. Basically, I was the fielder and the double got between my legs. I screwed up. Uh, Misty, I do have. This is the option put on um, morning uh, micro strategies. Now, thank God they're up. So good. I'm just playing this one. It's a high risk move on this you know, yield max thing. Go look at them on their website. Do yield max ETFs, and you'll see there's a coin one and there's a micro strategy one. There's several others too, but it's high, high, high risk. So do your own diligence. Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, I don't have this. I bought this just to see because I like the 20% yield and it's at the bottom. So I figure, why not? Let me buy a couple bucks of that and see what it does with this bond crap. So we'll see. That might be a bad move, but I went up 14 cents. I'm probably broke even right now. Uh, I don't have that. I don't have that. Uh, what is that? That's a shipping company. Whoa, wait a minute. That's interesting. All right, that jumped back up. This thing is all over the place. It's all based on the Middle Eastern conflict and the shipping in that area. It's crazy. So I was in that, made a couple bucks off that as well. It's got a high yield as well, but it's very volatile. You can see blah, 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 but with volatility, you can make money. 30 minute video so far. Yay. All right, ET energy transfer. Uh, these are just high yield, 7%. 8%, better than money market at 5%, but you know, there's a risk with it because you're buying the share price. I do have these two. Uh, they're holding, they're holding steady. Uh, ETF Bitcoin down a little bit. Nah, it's holding. It's again, based on Bitcoin and Bitcoin's kind of tanking a little bit right now. It's going, yeah, look at freaking Bitcoin with the having. I think it's just it does this all the time. You know, they had the freaking ETFs and Bitcoin kind of, eh, whatever. The Bitcoin, the ETFs went down and Bitcoin went down. But then everything shot up. So we'll see if this having had any effect on anything. It, was all, it seemed like the price was already built into it. And that's just normal with every stock. So I think Bitcoin is starting to behave like an equity. Whereas the, the news and the uh, earnings are already built in pre-date. So you, uh, you uh, buy on the rumor, you sell on news like up to, uh, up to um, uh, my God, help me, uh, up to earnings date. And that maybe you want to dump right before. But with Tesla, that's, that proved that wrong because after Tesla came out and they did okay, but they didn't beat anything, they were kind of disappointing numbers, but their stock took off again. So it makes no freaking sense. So you just don't know. You really just don't know. That's why sometimes index, indexes with dollar cost averaging, if you want to sleep at night, may be the way to go. Some of this short stuff I'm trying, can you, know, you can lose some sleep a little bit, but uh, yeah, and you can't take your eye off your mission like I did with the miner. So, and hopium doesn't really pay the bills too. You can't hope it's going to come back. You got to just figure it out. Either take your, take a break even, take your 10% loss or um, just hold. You never know. All right, guys, on that note, just a little, is what, I don't know what the freaking day is today. Saturday morning, little Saturday morning wrap up on the uh, trades. I did plug a 
crypto miner back in. What the hell? I forgot they're called CPU miner rig. Back in a nice hash just to check, just in case I didn't miss the bus or the boat. What do we call it? Missed the train or missed something. And nope, the uh, profitability on one Ryzen 9 3900X is not worth the uh, <clears throat> the juice isn't worth the squeeze on that puppy. I was hoping maybe up that like five bucks for one rig. Nah, it's like pennies. And I just turned it back off. And again, the sound of silence is beautiful. I like the silent. The uh, in the study here in the little server room is nice and peaceful right now. And I'm enjoying it. Yeah, but I'll keep my CPU rigs. I am dumping my GPUs as fast as possible. I get some shekels from whatever I get left over from after eBay, you know, puts me through the ringer on their high fees and their abusive employees. Uh, yeah, they got a really abusive staff, man. If you want to read the articles in eBay and the horrible people they hire, yeah, go look that up. Their safety department uh, going after people personally. Oh, my God. These people are monsters. Yeah, what is going on in this world? eBay has some of the worst people. <laughs> and I'm sure YouTube has some of the worst people as well. Oh, my God. But eBay has documented, and they lost actually a, a civil or um, a lawsuit in court. They had to pay damages for just their abuse criminality i think people got arrested too for harassment these people are just monsters man yeah watch out out there man Ooh, be careful keep your stuff off the internet keep your uh, identity protected keep your name try not to sign up for a stupid mailing list like i do and then you get spammed for a week it's ridiculous I, unsubscribe every email you get you don't want unsubscribe unsubscribe it's going to take 50 times but get off this list all right on that note guys a little rant little saturday morning rant of what's going on what i'm doing uh yeah i blew i blew uh, blew the advice on the uh energy sector thing let's see if that comes back i did not expect exxon to come in with lower than expected uh quarterly uh oh my god income report what do we call it so we'll see uh yeah that's surprising earnings why do i say income is it earnings well, I'm totally drawing a blank right now. Getting old, man. My brain's starting to fry. <laughs> I need to eat some more ice cream. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, what are you guys up to? What is going on with you? Uh, <clears throat> I'm kind of all over the place. I'm going to just keep babbling here. This is just a BS video. Um, kind of back into watching some of these comic guys I watch. <clears throat> these comic pro artist guys are kind of entertaining. They're fighting a little subculture, a subculture, culture war. It's kind of interesting, but uh, they, they're, they're definitely taking up the fight and they're kind of interesting what they do, their independence and they put out some interesting art. I like the art, not a big into the graphic novel thing, the stories I buy them just to really support the artist. And I like the, I like the art and I'll frame them and all that crap, but uh, I could care less about the stories, man. Uh, I just don't have patience for it. I like, oh, that's a good drawing. That's cute. Uh, but they're nice guys. They make me laugh. I like that. So I'm back into that mode. Kind of into a French study mode yet. Kind of just uh, uh, acquiring the language, listening, don't practice, don't, starting to do my, more of my practice speaking. Uh, that's the real nugget is um, any written language is way different than the spoken language. It's almost like a tiff, two different languages. Written is different than spoken uh grammatically is learning grammatically the way they teach in school does not work it doesn't teach you to speak fluently or conversationally it doesn't teach i had spanish for so long i can't speak a damn word uh they don't know how to teach in school and that's by design they don't know themselves you're basically taught to be a factory worker in school uh the real way is to just do the freaking work and when you i say do the work you got to do it smart and the right way, if you're practicing the wrong way, you're just going to be practicing the wrong way. If you're not hitting the baseball the right way and you keep doing the wrong thing, you're going to still suck. Just because you practice 10 hours, I mean, you're going to be better. You got to practice the right way. Focus, focus, focus. It's almost like high intensity training and you just keep focusing on that. Oh, that's, that's another thing I'm, fo I'm doing to keep, uh, keep my brain sharp. Uh, do a language, man. You want to you wanna turn other areas of your little brain on, your gray matter. That little thing between your ears. Try doing a freaking language. Pick up some language you always wanted to learn. Uh, just do it at your own leisure, your own pace. Uh, the trick for me was 
I spent a lot of time finding the right way to learn. And once I figured out the right way for me to learn, it, it all dialed in. Don't waste money on anything. Do not spend money on any apps. Duolingo's crap. Do not waste your money at all. It's all use ChatGPT if you need to. Use Google Translate and watch YouTube. You will be good to go. There's a lot of like easy French, YouTube, easy Chinese, easy uh, Italian. There's all the easy type channels out there. They're all kind of a brand. And they do it really good because they do conversational. You want to hear people speak. Uh, go to listen to real podcasts in that native language you're looking to learn instead of these baby kindergarten stuff like dog jumped over a tweet. Now you got to learn how people speak to pick it up because it's totally different. Picking it up by ear is really the uh, science. Uh, it's hard to pick up the word. You got to tune your ear and uh, you can listen at faster speeds on YouTube. And then when normal people speak, they sound slow. So that's a nice little trick. Oh, what else is going on? Like I said, did the truck tires, <clears throat> rotated those, get that thing, and uh, loaded up the fluids on the truck. Little basic crap. One thing, here's a pro tip. On a, I'm in a salinic environment. That means salt air, salt water. Uh, I don't drive the vehicles through salt water, but again, the salt air and the wind blows, and it just eats everything. So what I found works is I use Yama Shield. This is a silicone corrosive protectant spray. Uh, Yama by Yamaha. Yama Shield. I use it on outboards. I get a can and I get under my truck, my little Tacoma. I spray every joint and even a little golf cart we drive. I spray every ball joint, everything that looks like it's rusting, everything on the suspension, every wire because it's good for electronics as well. I spray everything with that just to coat it. And it's just a film. It's silicone, right? It's like spraying with a uh, coconut oil or something, and that actually uh, keeps things lubed up, right? Like your wife keeps her lubed up and uh, protects it as well. Keep uh, minimizes the rust and corrosion. And even if you're up north in the crappy Rust Belt states where I grew up, uh, you may want to think about using that as well for the salt and crap they put on the roads. Uh, definitely works. Uh, yeah, and it cans only ten bucks. Ten bucks a can. Do it like every quarter, you know whatever every time you rotate the tires you know get under a spray a can empty it boom and uh it'll if you want to keep your vehicle that's a little pro tip even under the hood too pop the pop the hood up the hood cover get in there spray some shit you know you know it's not going to hurt anything it's going to actually protect it i have had no issues and uh rust has been minimized on bolts and everything uh what else have i done that's about it uh plug kits always have a tire plug kit available I bought a nice one and I cannot find it. I had just the loosey goosey ones I used. I, when I rotated the tires, I had a bolt in one, pulled that out. Of course, it got tss, and of course, I plugged it, but I couldn't find my pro kit. Um, I don't know what I did with it. It's probably in the other car. I need to find that or buy another one. Get it on Amazon or go to, I don't know where, but it's a red little kit, has all the plugs and tools in it to fix a nail puncture and stuff like that. You can drive a tire with a plug. I've done it for years on highway speeds and even down where I'm at. I don't really, you don't have to go fast. Plugs and tires work. If you do it right, they're not going to fly out. I've had, oh my God, I had one tire with like three plugs in it. I had it for years. And then you know, the reason I replaced it because I got bald. You know, I go, I guess something cheap. I better replace these tires. <laughs> and uh, then you know what I learned too, you want to buy quality tires. Spend the money. Toyos for trucks last and their quality and is it Bridgestone I know I'm getting it wrong is it Michelin or Bridgestone which is the quality tire one of the tire you pay a lot of premium I should look is it Michelin or Bridgestone I forget I got it from Tire Rack but you pay the extra dollars and it, the tires last their quality tire, they don't go bald in a year um, yeah you, you pay a couple hundred bucks for tires it's gonna go bald in a year you pay an extra you pay I don't know. Pay more for a tire on top dollar and it's going to last. Oh, what do you got? 44 minutes. I don't know. What else you want to talk about? That's all I got. It's just a rant. Rant video. Get sick of stocks. I'm just, again, May. The May article came out and got me thinking. And uh, I'm definitely, we're um, next, what, Wednesday, May starts. I, every day, man, I'm going to be watching. I'm going to be watching. <clears throat> the problem with Bitcoin, too, is that you get these, like now, you get these damn these cursed flash drops, flash crashes, and you don't know it's all these whales or the government or someone's dropping their Bitcoin. 
or doing something and it causes the prices to drop. And the one thing that scared me was the stupid um, Iranian and Israeli bullcrap. People that hate each other for no reason, right? And it's going to go on forever. Uh, that caused Bitcoin to drop. I'm like, what? What, what up with that? And I just said, that, that kind of made, I, that kind of took a little interest in Bitcoin away from me and that it's that sensitive. It's like it's supposed to be decoupled from all the uh, geopolitical bull crap. But uh, maybe it isn't. I don't know. Anyway, my other advice is read, read, read as much as you can. Play with stuff. Invest a couple bucks and lose it. You know, may take some risks, like invest a hundred bucks and see what happens. Try some things. And uh, that's how you learn. And uh, oh, what's this? Oh, I don't care about ads. Ads don't bug me, dude. I'm not paying. Try, and that's another advice. Don't pay for subscriptions and memberships. You will forget you have them. You'll find interest in them for a day. Then you'll find you've lost interest. And guess what? Every year you're going to be billed because guess what? You forgot about it. And uh, it's just going to add up over time. So don't do a subscription membership. My God, please don't. Please do not do it. I almost did one today and I caught myself. I said, no, I found I could go to chat GPT and do the same thing for free. And I didn't pay for a subscription just to read me uh, French on, a, on an audio file. I went to chat GPT, boom, did it for free. Um, blammo. Yeah, watch the subscription membership stuff. Uh, let's see. TradingView is your friend. Go get it. It is awesome. And what am I looking at now? Bitcoin 63. <laughs> Look at this thing. This, is, this irks the F out of me. Look at that. 66. And that was on the 25th, two days ago. And it tanks down. Why? There needs to be explanations in here. What happened? There's a huge volume sell. And it's at 12, ugh, 12, was that midnight? I have no idea. And it just goes down. And there's no rhyme or reason. Oh, well, I don't know. I'm just babbling on. I'm trying to think what else is going on today. Oh, that's it. We're now 45 minutes in. I'm trying to think what else I can do. I'm kind of petered out on this CPU mining crap, this GPU mining I am selling crap. I'm thinking about, man, I'll start selling my motherboards. I just really hate dealing with eBay, as mentioned, and just dealing with people possibly scamming me. I'm so sick of it. You start losing your faith in people after a while. It's like, come on, you're really going to keep scamming me? Stop it. Uh, it doesn't happen a lot, but when it does, it just really bothers me. Um, but I may just dump as much as I can to get those shekels and uh, just to have that and just hold on to some money. Uh, in the money market and uh, getting ready for the impending upcoming economic collapse. <laughs> there's no way it's going to go up. It's going to go up, maybe, like I said, for a quarter yet. And after that, there's no way. Not, like I said, based on the massive amount of layoffs, the uh, massive inflation, the massive store closures, the uh, blue cities are imploding due to their policies. Uh, what else? The corporate buildings are being vacated. No one, they can't even occupy them. They're being sold for pennies on the dollar. What else is going on? Uh, car prices, car dealerships, they can't sell cars because they got too damn greedy. Boo hoo. Maybe they should learn to code, but they can't now because AI has replaced all the coders. <laughs> yeah, it's getting kind of funny, man. It's like a dystopian science fiction movie. Uh, but yeah, boo hoo on them. People can't sell their cars. Manufacturers can't sell their cars. Uh, you can get a Tesla Model 3 that hurts them, billions of them. Uh, you get it for 120K if you really want to get a Tesla. I don't know, man. You have to, if you're going to get one, make sure you have a freaking place to charge it, a reliable place, maybe off your house or something like that, or in your neighborhood. But I don't know, man. I don't know. Give me a little six cylinder internal combustion engine and I'm happy. <laughs> Uh, let's see what else is on my mind. Because I don't think I'll make a video for a while. I'm just getting petered out on this crap. Uh, YouTube will put ads on these videos. I'll make a penny off. It's kind of sad. But uh, that's the way it works. If something's free, you're the product. Uh, let's see. Big tech earnings collapse and options ideas. Uh, I don't Just, again, be careful. People are, cyber attacks are increasing massively. I found out why we're hearing more about them is because <clears throat> there has been a compliance 
agreement issued where now these places, these cities, communities, and businesses have to report any cyber attack. Kansas City just had one. They have a scout system which controls their traffic system, their billboards, traffic billboards, um, some other crap. And uh, they were shut down. The traffic cameras were shut down. I don't know if it affected red lights. Uh, that would be stupid if the local government put uh, traffic lights on a computer system like that tied into the web. But cyber attacks are everywhere. Most of it is because idiots don't password protect stuff. It's not anything super classified secret that they hack into. It's like, oh, some idiot has password as admin, one, two, three. And then they get into the freaking web page or their admin page and they can start poking around and play with the settings. It's almost as simple as that. It's just poor security efforts, lazy people in the government or these corporations have no idea what they're doing. And uh, these guys who just have basic computer knowledge get in there and they start effing with things. So yeah, that's the most recent one. Wells Fargo is always being hacked. Uh, what's that plaid where they use to bridge your uh, like an exchange to your bank? They always get hacked, so all your information, your banking information, is 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 a compromise. They don't care, you know. They don't give a crap. They either get hacked or they sell it. So plaid's not a good one. You got to watch out for them. And that was my other advice I gave on another video: is if you have money you're transferring to any exchange, have a little proxy account with only a couple bucks in it, not tied to your main account. Because Plaid will give away all your information and you'll lose everything. Yeah, Plaid is not good. Just look them up. They have issues uh, for privacy and uh, basic cybersecurity awareness. All right. On that note, dropping some facts, peeing off a lot of people. And uh, yeah, it's, a, it's 15 minutes, man. But let me know if I'm wrong on anything because I'm very skeptical. I think things are going to get bad. And I give you a lot of input when I see, see things going. If you can work with your hands, man, you are going to be king. Uh, Jimmy, come over here and replace my tire. Yes, sir, I can come over, but you're going to have to buy me dinner or you're going to have to give me 100 bucks because my time is valuable. I could be sitting here uh, sleeping or I could be working on your tire for nothing, but you better pay me. <laughs> yeah, time, again, do not undervalue your time, folks. That's, you're not being rude asking for compensation for your time. If you don't think you're getting paid what you're worth, don't do it. I mean, come on. That's just my, uh, have confidence in yourself. Have respect. And if they're not going to pay you for your time, don't do it. Don't give away your work for free, your time for free. And on that night, I am out of here. Oh, wow. Bitcoin 63,000. whoop de doo I want to see that go up. I think maybe in May, middle of May, it might start moving again. Things are kind of consolidating right now based on my hunch. But as any Bitcoin pro on YouTube would say, I hate doing this, but they always say the same thing. And I just shake my head like you guys are idiots. Uh, it could go up. It could go down. It could go sideways. Or I could do nothing at all. Ah, Bitcoin to 100,000. I'm getting nervous. Everyone's saying Bitcoin 100,000. That makes me nervous. It happened years ago. Remember it shot up to 60? Everyone's saying, you know, that Pomplino guy and his stupid brothers. Oh, it's going to go to 100K in Bitcoin, man. 100K. Uh, damn thing jump drops all the way down to 20. <laughs> Massive flash crash, you know what I mean? And it's like, I'm afraid it's going to happen again because everyone is pushing the stupid 130K narrative. Uh, the only thing holding it up is the stupid ETFs, which is a lot of money has been flowed to these accounts. And uh, if they crash, uh, I don't think Fidelity, Vanguard, BlockRock want to get a lot of phone calls from their clients going, uh, Buffy, where did my money go? And they're going to say, well, Biffy, uh, we screwed up. Sorry. Eh, Bitcoin. Eh. <laughs> that's not going to go well with a lot of people. So that may be uh, one thing that's going to keep Bitcoin around. Plus scarcity as well, digital gold. But you never know. I don't know. Do you know? If you know, why are you on YouTube listening to some media talk about it? You probably uh, would be on your yacht or living in uh, Jackson Hole in the mountains away from humans. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. I'm out of here, guys. Go forth to great things. Have a good weekend. Um, I don't know. Get outside. Get away from the noise. Get away from all the people. Get away from city pollution. Go out in the wilderness and walk around. But don't get eaten by a bear. Uh, that's, that's never a good day. All right. Stop recording. All right. I'm out of here. Bye.